Welcome back to Spreadsheet Fundamentals. We are on the final project. You have learned enough about spreadsheets to make what I think will be a very useful tool. We are working in a spreadsheet that we have uh, created two tabs in so far. We have our driving miles and our collection. I collected programming books, still do collect programming books, and we're going to add a tab on the bottom with the plus sign. We're going to rename that tab with a right click, and I'm going to rename it personal budget. I'm going to avoid spaces. I hit enter. I'm now positioned in upper cell A1. We've gone through the fundamentals. I'm going to show you how I would go about designing the budget and then I'm going to leave it kind of ugly and unformatted for you to tinker with. The basic budgeting equation, let's remember what we want our spreadsheet to be able to do, is we want to be able to take some amount of income and we want to subtract from that some amount of expenses and get available uh, for savings, or we'd say uh, net cash flow, depending on how you want to think about your budget. So we can say net savings. Savings is great. I'm going to make the column A a little bit wider so that I can include all of my values, and then I'm going to enter numbers to correspond with my row headers. Notice I previously had been organizing data along header rows. So if I were um, for example, if I wanted to make a spreadsheet of budgets, I could do organize this along columns. But in our case, we're going to be thinking vertically. So accounting and money often uses vertical organization. That's because of the invention of the um, two-column accounting system, which involved columns of numbers that are adding up, and they all add up to one beautiful uh, accounted for zero. I'm going to move these back to my rows so we can think of these as row headers. I'm using Control X and Control V for Victor to paste to move those cells around. I'm using the keyboard. So let's say that my income was $1,200. I had a total expenses of $867. And I would like the spreadsheet program to calculate the net savings. So I'm going to ask it with a equal sign. Actually, let's do a zoom so you can see me a little closer. I'm going to ask the spreadsheet to calculate the value in net savings by giving it an equal sign, and then it's a formula. So how do you want me to calculate it? Well, take whatever's in cell A1, and from that, subtract whatever's in cell A2. My text or my cell highlighting confirms that these are the cells that I want to subtract. I can hit enter, and the subtraction occurs. And if I we need to revise my income. I can change that cell to 1300 and the calculated cells all change immediately. This is money, dollars, so I want to format it with uh, dollar signs. Remember, if you find, you find yourself doing something that seems awkward or not very useful, like typing in dollar signs before every number, there's probably an easier way. So I'm going to select the cells that contain currency. I'm going to go back to home. Home is where you look for things if you can't find them anywhere else. And then I can format it as currency. Notice I can even uh, get a drop-down box to select the unit of currency. In this case, we are in the United States. And so we use the US dollar. And now I have much neater cells. This mini project is going to ask you to enumerate or come up with individual itemized incomes and expense categories. And what that means is you're going to want to insert rows. So uh, what's going to be the easiest is for you to start with a blank spreadsheet. After you've understood the basic concept of income less expenses gives you net savings, I would say let's make a header called income sources. And then I might say um, CCAC teaching. Maybe I also run a side business making cabinets. And then I can say amount. Now, this is a budget, so we have an anticipated, so budgeted amount. This is what I expect to earn, and our actual amount, and then the difference between them. Because I'd like to be able to say, if I anticipated making $1,200 from CCAC, but they actually paid me 876 I want to see how much less I made than expected. That would help me adjust the way that I allocate my resources for the next month. And this cell also contains money, so I'm going to format it. In fact, these all these columns, this is all going to contain currency. We'll never put any, we'll never put text in this column. And this way, we are kind of combining our row headers and then also our column headers. So I'm going to select 
columns B, C, and D. I did that by clicking and dragging the column labeled, in this case a letter, and I dragged from B to D. So all the cells into infinity, as far as Excel can go, as far as the eyes can see, I'm going to select them all and format them as currency. Now I need to run a little formula for my different cell. So how do I get the difference between budgeted and actual? Well, formula, equal sign, calculate, the budgeted amount minus sign the actual amount, and I have a difference of $324. Now you may want to think about the order. Uh, in my case, when I make less money than budgeted, I'd like this to be negative. So I want to switch those. So I'm going to overwrite the formula and take actual minus budgeted. The Excel puts minus values in parentheses according to the default. I can also right click this select and right click and go to format cells and see that under n accounting I can say um, accounting and I can say symbol. Um, this is in case a number issue so I can put a red or negative. Um, this is red not good for printing um, but good for looking on the screen because red means in the red it's negative. So you're going to have income sources Remember, you're going to want to format this row nicely so that the headers stand out. And I might want to format these a little bit differently. Um, so then we'd come down here and say expenses. And then I could say something like rent and uh, the light bill and water, gas, phone. I mean, look, the expenses add up really fast. Uh, and we go on through. And then we'll probably have a total... We can even do subtotals on these. So uh, let's say I budgeted to make $500 building cabinets. I actually had a really great month and built a bunch of cabinets. I made $890. I'd want a total, so I'd say subtotal for all of my income. So again, we're going to use our sum formula. Go back and watch the core concepts videos for that at a slower pace. And I can calc... Ooh... There are one or more circular references where a formula refers to its own cell directly or indirectly. This may cause them to calculate incorrectly. Try removing or changing these references or moving the formulas to different cells. Excel was trying to let us know that I selected the range B2 through B4. So I can't click on and see those because I've got this error message up because I want you to be comfortable reading the error messages from start to, start to finish. Um, it will teach you about the program. So I say, all right. Um, what it did, uh, so notice I accidentally selected the cell in which I was writing the formula. What I really wanted to go was from B2 through B, B2 through B3. Small little range. I can't calculate the sum of itself. It turns into a loop and goes on forever. And so I needed to revise that. So sometimes you'll get a little notice box if it's a particularly horrible error. The other thing I want to note is something called formula pasting, which means that if I want to calculate the difference of these two cells, well, that's exactly the operation I did here. If I double-click the cell with the formula, the edit uh, mode pops up, and I can see the highlighted cells that are involved in the formula. What would be handy is if I could just tell the spreadsheet, in this cell, uh, D3, I want you to do exactly what you did in D2. The way that the spreadsheet interprets what it did in cell D2 is like this. The cell C2 reference is interpreted as go to the cell directly to my left, then subtract the value in the cell 2 to my left. What this means is I can copy and paste this formula into a new cell, and it will uh, undertake the exact same operation with respect to the cell that you pasted it in. So watch this. I'm going to copy 324. Notice I'm not copying the value, I'm copying the way the value was calculated. I'm copying C2 minus B2. And I'm going to click the cell underneath it and hold down Control and tap V for paste, V for Victor. And uh, you can see I'm going to hit Escape that gets rid of my copy. And I'm going to double check the way this worked. The 390, I double clicked it. Notice it wasn't subtract. It's not subtracting the row before it, even though that's what the formula in the cell pasted above it used. Uh, what it did was it re the Excel rewrote the formula. It adjusted the cells that are referenced based on the pattern that I specified. There's an easy way to do this, which is to click the cell in which we want to paste the formula. Click it once, not edit mode. Don't double click. Escape to get out of edit mode. 
Hover over the lower right hand corner where you see that dark square. Click and drag and it's going to form a yellow paste all the way down. So see what it did? It moved a formula into each cell. That's handy because when I come down here and work with my expenses, then I can say I expected to spend 75 on electric, but I ran my heater a bunch. It was cold, 90 bucks. That is a difference of 16. Now, I may want to flip this though because if an expense is an overrun, if actuals more than budgeted, I want that to be negative. So I'm going to revise. I'm going to do that by deleting the cells that I really didn't want. Um, delete the contents of cells that I did not want that formula in. I'm not going to formula on my expense header row. I might, uh, oops, I might uh, even just delimit these easily. Uh, so these are my expenses. You can choose nice colors. I'm going to make them particularly ugly so that you don't copy mine. Um, you got to choose your own. Uh, what would be really ugly with that orange? Green is hard. Green is usually gross. Um, there, that's kind of ugly. So that's the idea. And then you'll come up with net down here. And that would involve subtracting your expenses from your income. That gives you a primer for this project. And notice that when we are ready to submit the project, there are detailed steps for saving your file. And I'll post a little tutorial on that in the submission section a little farther down. Have fun. Budget away.